In our previous lesson, we looked at string manipulation and all the ways that we can do it within uh, within the .NET Framework class library. Often you're going to be working with dates and times uh, in your application. And so this lesson is going to look at the basics of working with the date time class, as well as doing date time math, formatting the date time to be represented as a string, and a lot more. So I've already taken the liberty of creating a new project called Dates and Times. And I've already set up the, the project similar to what we've done in the past. I have a button control that is has been renamed to my button and I replaced the content with click me, okay? And then I have a text block called my text block and I've removed the text. I didn't set the uh, text wrapping property. I can, it, it doesn't matter one way or the other. I don't think we're gonna have that much text in this in this particular lesson. So I'm gonna double click the click me button and uh, let's just start off with trying to uh, represent a date and time in our text block. So as you can see, I've created in this first line of code, in line 26, a new date time object and set its value equal to now. So it's going to get the current date time at this instant and save that into my value. And then I'm going to try to display that onto the text block controls text property. Now already we can see a problem. As I hover my mouse cursor over the red squiggly line, it tells me that it cannot implicitly convert the type system.dateTime to string, as we've seen this many times already. Okay, so how can we resolve this? Well, let's start off with just two string, um, but I'm gonna show you in a moment there are a lot of additional options as well. So let's go ahead and click the click me button and you can see that it formats a nice uh, date and time according to the area in the world in which I live. It's common for those in the United States to represent the month first, then the day, and then the year, and then the time as you see here with AM and PM. Uh, however, uh, if you live in a different region of the world, based on your phone settings, it will represent the date that is more common to your part of the world. Some use the, uh, the day, month, year format, for example. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. And I wanna look at some other additional options because what if I only wanted to display just the date and not the current time? What I can do, and you can see there's just a number of these two uh, methods like to short date string, for example. So let's try that and then run our application and choose the click me button. Now it's only rendering the, uh, the month, day, year, again, according to my region settings in my phone. Uh, what if I wanted to only represent the time, the current time of day, instead of the date? Well, I can use a different method to short uh, time string. And so let's run that. And I'm gonna click the click me button. You can see I can just represent uh, 2.03 in the afternoon, okay? Uh, what happens with the uh, long date string? To long date string. Let's run it and see what we get. All right, so we have a much friendlier, uh, much longer version of the date, Tuesday, September 21st, 2010, okay? Uh, and so we can play around with the different, uh, the different formats um, to get different results in our output of strings. Now, what if I wanted to do something like this? Uh, let's go uh, my text block dot text equals my value and I wanted to um, change it to not just today but three days from now so I would go add days and then I'm gonna pass in the number of days that I want to add and then I'll do a two short date string alright so a couple things about this I want to notice one moment here as we just run it and see what it's all gonna look like Okay, so if you recall before, it was 921, now it's 924. So we are looking at a method that explain, that shows how to add more days or time onto our 
our current date that we have stored within the my value variable. Uh, notice also that I've chained these together. First of all, I've chained this method, and then after that, I take the result of that and then chain on this next method. And I could continue to chain on additional methods as they make sense in order to uh, uh, to format or to coerce the date in such a way that I get the result that I'm looking for. Uh, so that's another uh, notion we looked at previously in the uh, the video about strings, and we see the same thing here. And it's just something that's available to you in the .NET framework. You just have to be aware of the return types of each of the methods that you want to chain together. So in this case, we hover our mouse cursor over the add days method. It returns back a date time, and which is used as an input parameter, uh, in a sense, of the, uh, of the two short date string, which returns, as we can see, a string, which is then used in our text property, which can only accept a string. So we just have to be aware of the, the return values for each of the methods. But if that works out, then we can continue to, to, to work with them. Uh, it would not work in the other way around. So if I were to do this and then that, I'm going to get an error. Okay, It'll say it can't convert uh, uh, basically a argument of type uh, string into a date time. right? because it just doesn't know how to do that. OK, great. Uh, we can not just add days, but we can add time as well. So let's do an example of that real quick. Dot text equals my value dot add hours. So we can add hours. It was 203, I believe, earlier. Let's add a few hours to that and then do a two short time string on it and display that out to the user. OK, so now it's 5.06 PM. Great. And then what if you wanted to subtract? Is there Are there subtract methods? Well, not exactly. But um, it's not difficult to figure out that we can just do this and pass in, for example, a negative three days to short date string. And see how much I'm relying on IntelliSense. I'm using just a few characters and then using my arrows. You've got to become familiar with IntelliSense. It'll totally speed up and improve the accuracy of your code. So here again, now I'm re removing three days. So it's the 21st. We're going back to the 18th. OK, great. Suppose that I just wanted to work with a part of the date. I just need to get the current month. How could I go about doing that? Well, I would do something like this. My value dot month. And month is going to return an integer, 1 through 12. So I'll just do a two string on that so that I get it in the right format to put it in my text property. And so September is the ninth month. And there are all kinds of additional um, uh, dates. So I'm just going to put my mouse cursor right before the period and hit the period again. So I can grab the minute, the second, uh, the time of day, the day of week. If I were to go up here to the very uh, top, the, the day and the year, I guess, well, we're probably in 230 something, just guessing off the top of my head. OK, so there are a lot of ways to get at the parts of the date. Uh, and not just take the whole date in one big piece. If we needed to run, do some calculation, or we wanted to store the values separately, or whatever the case might be, okay, we can get at those. All right, how about creating a new date? As we can see right here, I was able to work with the date time right now. But what if I wanted to represent a date in the past? There's a couple of different ways I can go about that. First of all, let's just um, comment this out. And then I'll recreate it down here. So date time, my value, or actually let's do this. Let's go my birthday equals uh, new date time. And then as I use the open parenthesis uh, to, cr uh, to create a new instance of a date and time, notice that I get IntelliSense that pops up under it. And you see it says 1 of 12. Uh, again, I don't want to get too deep into uh, talking about object-oriented programming, but what I have here are some options to initialize this date time object. And so I could choose this first version, this first overloaded constructor, 
which requires no input parameters. So I could just close it off like that and create a date time. It has nothing assigned to it. I believe it just goes to either a null or, or some date way in the past that represents nothing essentially. Or I have some other options here. If I use the down arrow on my keyboard, I can look at some other options. So long ticks. Uh, initializes a new instance of the date time structure to a specified number of ticks uh, a date time expressed in 100 nanosecond units okay I'm not sure that's gonna be all that helpful for me here but if I keep moving down into the list of overloaded constructors that are available I could do this instead so um, you can see I can input a year a month and a day so I could represent my birthday as this series of numbers and now my birthday is December 7th 1969 so that's one way to construct a new date time the other way to do it and probably the, the way that I prefer personally unless I have some programmatic way uh, some variables that are holding on to values that represent months days and years um, I would probably do this date time whoops let's back it up here date time dot parse and then pass in uh, 12 7 19 69 all right so that's the other way I can use a parse method remember we saw the parse method before but we saw it on the integer the int dot parse and then we passed in a string that represented some number like five well here we're doing the same thing except with the date time using the parse method to pass in a string that we know represents uh, a date a real date Okay, so that's one way, uh, the second way to create a new instance of a date time set to a specific date. Now, let's do this uh, to kind of extend this example out a little bit. Let's determine how many, uh, how many days have elapsed since I was born. That should be a fun little exercise that will depress me greatly. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll start off with a time span object. Now, a time span is not a specific point in time. It represents a span of time between two dates. So it's a whole different object. Uh, it represents the, the period of time between two specific points in time. All right, so we need to use a different object that's, uh, that can work with that sort of data. Uh, it creates a space in memory that will work with uh, you know, a span of time. So here we go. So my age equals date time dot uh, now dot subtract and then I'm going to pass in my birthday so let's kind of pick this apart I want to know the difference between now and my birthday so I use the subtract method I could have used uh, you know add days instead of add days I could have subtracted a value from this uh, however subtract is looking for an actual date and it's going to return if we hover our mouse cursor over it it's going to return a time span object so that's why I needed to uh, create a new instance of time span here to, to, to retrieve the value that's going to be returned from subtract um, and why it wouldn't make as much sense to use it in this previous exa previous example when we were subtracting uh, days in that case all right so now Finally, then, let's go my text block dot text equals my age dot to string, and this will tell us the number of days that I have lived on this earth so far. All right, so you can see that I've lived 14,898 days, and included in that are, uh, looks like, um, 13 hours and 31 minutes or something to that effect okay I guess uh, I should be uh, happy that I've made it that far but um, suddenly I'm feeling very old uh, but at any rate I could use some combination of properties and methods on the uh, the time span uh, to determine exactly how that translates into years and months and days given the possibility of leap years and such and I just took a very simple case here but we probably need to account for some more things when working with the time span object
Again, there's a lot, a lot that we have not covered, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the common uses of the date time and then the time span objects. And I'm going to give you the same encouragement at the end of this lesson as I did with the previous lesson. If you find yourself writing a lot of code to manipulate dates and times, uh, you might want to stop and look through MSDN or search online because chances are the .NET Framework base class library has something already built in it to help you out in that regard. So writing applications involves working with data and as we've learned in this lesson and in the previous lesson the .NET Framework base class library can help you with all kinds of manipulations uh, of all kinds of data. So be sure to turn first to the BCL, the base class library, before you go off and do a lot of work on your own. All right, so with that in our pocket, now we'll move on uh, and get into some more advanced concepts. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.